is a very good afternoon. It's Niall Boiler with you for the next hour or so. We are going to be talking about traffic. Before I do that, by the way, there's a lot to talk about. And a lot happened over the weekend, as you are all very aware at this stage. Uh, and it's gone viral on Twitter, but it hasn't appeared in any of the newspapers or it hasn't appeared in any of the news outlets. And I'll tell you why in a second. Um, but, of course, in case you haven't been following the story, the story is of a reporter who is doing a documentary stoke podcast for News Talk. And um, that reporter is seen in a video which has gone viral in a hotel room, what well, seems like a hotel room, with two other guys, you know, writing slogans on flags, which were later used, by the way, in an altercation in Kulak with protesters or people who were standing by their rights to not have immigrants in their area. Now, of course, there has been accusations made that there was a setup and all sorts of things. And I, from what you can see, it clearly looks that way. Um, there has been no statement yet from Paul Connolly the producer of the documentary. Um, and there has been no statement yet from News Talk in relation to that. And that's why the media probably, many people are frustrated that the media haven't covered the story yet where it's all over social media. There is a GDPR issue in relation to uh, a lot of the stuff that was on the mobile phone was all put up on social media. And I think people should condemn that, by the way, particularly the personal stuff that went up. Uh, but in relation to what the actual accusations and allegations are against uh, Paul Connolly and indeed News Talk, if indeed News Talk are paying Paul Connolly directly or if he's doing it uh, as a subcontractor, I don't know because I don't know his business. Um, but questions have to be answered. And News Talk have a responsibility and a duty to make a statement in relation to that. And I'm hoping they will. And Paul Connolly himself uh, would have, have to make a statement in relation to that. Um, to deny or uh, admit those allegations are actually true. So I think it would be only fair that we all wait, do our due diligence, as they say, and wait and see and give people a chance to respond. Let's look at the context before we pass any judgment. And I know people are passing judgment already, and it's clear why they're passing judgment. But as a professional, I think it would be fair to wait and hopefully a statement will come within the next 24 hours or 48 hours in relation to what has been accused or what the allegations that have been made online against Paul Connolly and against News Talk in relation to that particular protest in Kulak. And if indeed the allegations are true, it is scurrilous and it's terrible and it's awful that somebody would do that. But if indeed they're not true and there's a fair excuse for it, I can't understand what the excuse would be, but we will also find out that. So let's examine the statement before we pass judgment or we start before I pass judgment anyway in relation to that. So I just wanted to address it because I don't want people to think that I'm ignoring it because I'm certainly not ignoring it. I looked at it just like everybody else over the weekend and I was shocked by it. I'm not going to lie to you. So let's wait and see if we get a statement from News Talk and a statement from Paul Connolly in relation to that. And then we can all pass judgment on what you believe was right and wrong in that particular incident. Now, in relation to, by the way, climate change, I see one of our main climate alarmists has been posting, uh, you know, stuff up saying that you know, the temperature's gone up all over Europe and this is really unusual for April. Can I point out it's not really unusual for April? We, in 2007 in Ireland, we had 22 degrees in April. It was quite common. And actually, um, people who study the climate, etc., will tell you that when you've had a bad storm, which we had over the weekend, particularly strong winds, it would normally bring the temperature up and suck up those hot temperatures from the Sahara up into Europe. That's quite common, by the way, to have nice weather, really warm weather or unusual weather, after you would have a storm. So there's nothing unusual about that. So I'm kind of surprised by these climate alarmists that they think we're all stupid or something. Speaking of the climate, by the way, and I suppose it's all interlinked traffic is part of the environment. And I'm reading from the journal.ie here. Members of the public, including a majority of motorists, have voiced strong support for a controversial proposal to significantly reduce car traffic in Dublin city centre. Now, I know a lot of you are not from Dublin. But this will apply to every single city in Ireland. So it's not going to be just Dublin. It's going to be Cork, it's going to be Limerick, it's going to be Galway. It's going to be everywhere else as well. But Dublin City Council said there was a strong desire for change among the public and an overwhelming support, they say, for its plans to relocate road space or reallocate road space in favour of prioritising public transport, cycling, walking and eliminating cross-city journeys by motorists. In other words, you won't be able to go from one side of the city to the other. You'll have to use the M50. And the results of the public consultation on the plan, which received almost 3,600 submissions, have revealed, according to the Dublin City Council, 81% of respondents support reducing the amount of road space for private vehicles. Eamon Ryan would be just delighted with this, really, in the city centre, including 56% of individuals who normally travel by car. So out of those submissions, are we to assume that the other 44% don't use a car at all? They use public transport and bicycles. So what are they going to say? Of course they're going to say yes. 
However, some councillors claim the public consultation process is flawed and discriminatory as it appeared designed to exclude older people and those who could not access, access the use of their computers. The Dublin City Transport Plan, which is proposed jointly by Dublin City Council and the National Transport Authority, was approved by councillors in November. And it proposes a 40% reduction in general traffic and spaces for cars or private cars to drive in Dublin City. This is coming to a city near you, by the way. If you're from Cork, Limerick or Galway, don't think you're escaping this, by the way. So the question really is, are they right? Do you really think that people, the general public, don't want cars in the city? Now, I myself, if I was submitting my public submission, I would say absolutely not. I prefer to be in my car. I don't want to be on a bus. I pay for my car. I pay good money on my road tax. I pay for my diesel. I want to sit in my comfortable car and listen to my radio or make a phone call if that's what I need to do. Obviously on Bluetooth. So I'd prefer to sit in my car. Okay, it might take me a bit longer, but I don't travel to the city very much in fairness, so I'm very rarely ever stuck in that traffic. But it is it is one of the things, of course, you have to accept that if you drive a car through a city that you're going to get stuck in traffic. But should we reduce, as well, it's already reduced quite substantially in Dublin, and local and small businesses in Dublin have now said, this is terrible, you're trying to destroy business in the city. But the argument from the Green Party and the National Transport Authority is, no, 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 no. We want to make this like Amsterdam and Brussels and Berlin and Paris and other places like that where you pedestrianise most of the city and people will come in on public transport and do their shopping in Grafton Street. But that's not what the businesses are saying. Brown Thomas are not very happy at all. They're suggesting they're trying to kill business completely in the city. But let me know what you think. Is it a good idea to reduce the amount of private traffic in cities by, as they say, up to 40% reduction? to force us all to use public transport or walk or use your bicycle. Let me know what you think. The number, as usual, is 085... Sorry, 085 55 That's 085 55 I nearly always give out the other phone number on the other show. You know, I get confused sometimes. That's what happens when you get a bit older. Let me go to Jackie. Jackie, hi, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good. And, and <laughs> yeah, look, at it. isn't it madness? Absolutely madness. And I was only reading a, a thing there where, um, isn't it Owen Keegan? Um, Dublin, Dublin He's been there for County. years, Owen Keegan. Years. Yeah, no. And he wants to aggressively, now, not just restrict, but aggressively restrict road space for cars. Mm. I mean, that is some quote. Now, it, when you look at this, and I, 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 from being close to Galway City, and I've seen this right through the years, where they actually uh, organise the roads in a way that the, it build up of traffic, that could create traffic jams. And I'm sure it's going on in Dublin as well, where they create the traffic Yeah, with the one-way systems, all, these kind of one-way systems, uh, and then you've got bicycle lanes yeah, on narrow roads yeah. where you've reduced it from two lanes down to one, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, so what they do is they create the problem and then provide the solution then the way they want it to go. I, like, if you look at Cork City, I was only down there because we were down uh, doing a concert there recently. To try and get the Cork Opera House, try and get parking around the Cork Opera House. Uh, it's done in a way, and if you drive around even Cork City, it's, it's like as if they're pushing the cars outside the city completely to try and make you, that, that, that you get on a bus or you get whatever. But if you're like a gig and band, which is, I get this all the time, guys ringing me going, yeah. Temple Bar, how do we... How we do you get there? Anywhere. Yeah, I know. How, how do you how actually do you get bring, to it? <laughs> how do you bring equipment into a venue? Uh. Now, it's becoming more and more of a problem. And then it becomes... Well, a they, well they, they have a, like a five-point plan for doing all of this, by the way, which is reducing the amount of parking yeah. spaces, roadside parking spaces, to eliminate all those, say, around Gra- around Stevens Green, down around near Grafton Street, off St. William Street. All the, so all those parking spaces will be removed. The other thing then is a congestion charge, which means, that, and they will use the canals as being the city, of course. So as you pass each of the canals on both sides of the city, there'll be cameras up above, like in London, 
you'll be charged a tenner for going in and tenner for going out. So that, that they'll do that as well. There'll be loads, of, and then what they'll do is they'll increase the amount of bicycle lanes, of course, and pedestrianise many, many streets. Yeah. So they'll pedestrianise O'Connell Street. They'll pedestrianise, say, up around Dame Street. They'll pedestrianise all the. Well, they already want to pedestrianise around Trinity College there and all around that area. You know where you normally turn left or turn right if you're going back down at the Keys. So they want to pedestrianise all these areas. That's all part of the plan. Eamon Ryan has this vision of Dublin looking like Amsterdam. <laughs> oh, God. Have you walked around Amsterdam lately? No, I haven't never been to Amsterdam oh. in my life, by the way. Can I just point well, out? Well, no, no. If that's a city that you would like Dublin to be... Well, now Dublin, in fairness, has gone very bad drug-wise and all that. Yeah. But if you walk around Amsterdam, it's gone very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Yeah, so, but, but, he, uh, but, but the idea he has of this lovely, sunny picture of people cycling, you know, <laughs> <laughs> everywhere with their uh, little baskets on their bikes and you know what I mean? Yeah, but what they're doing is, like Brown Thomas are saying, they're wiping out businesses. And it's only like the very large businesses that might be aimed to sustain. But the, the likes of the small retailers and all that, it, they'll be wiped out because there'll be no footfall. Because who's going to come in and try and bring stuff on a bus or a train, carry stuff, get a taxi, get to the train station, all that. And, and you might have various items. Mm. That you'd need two or three people to carry them. You know, whereas you can drive in your car, pull up, open your boot, in goes your stuff, and away you go. Okay, but do, do me a favor, stay there, because I, I, I want you to stay with me, Jackie, because I want to go to Morris and Saoirse as well. Morris, hi, how are you? How you doing, Niall? Uh, Morris, I mean, it sounds like a lovely plan and you know what I mean and all that kind of thing, but it's not very practical, is it? No, I just sent in some information there to your team about a, a green person going around on a bike, a recording bus drivers and taxi drivers and reporting them trying to get them sacked. It's in your, it's gone in on the WhatsApp message for you there. This fellow is very active right. and he's restricted his emails. Um, but I see the city being torn apart for no other reason. Um, I know somebody that works with uh, NTA. And he said the Greens have made a total mess from Fairview Park all the way into the North Strand. They're ripping up the roads. Everything is for bikes, no cars. Yeah. Uh, the buses are getting new bus shelters and new stops. And there's no there's no buses to run the routes. Yeah. So I think the motors have been... We pay the highest insurance in the world, if not Europe, and the highest tax. And they're trying to is us off the road. But I'll tell you what the biggest mistake. One, they're driving around in big Mercedes government ministerial cars and two every time they restrict us in our diesel or petrol vans and try to make us um, go by what they want us to do they're polluting the country worse by keeping us all in the one place born on petrol and diesel but their argument is you shouldn't be in your car they want you to get a bus they, they don't want you to be in there, or cycle in or something like that I don't know yeah she would get killed on the road who's taking up most of the road now only electric bikes and scooters Mm. And there's no restrictions on them. They don't pay tax. They've yeah, no but, yeah, but, they've but no they're quite happy. Yeah, but the Green Party are mad about all of this. They they want you all on electric bikes and scooters and all sorts of things and push bikes and they want. And, and, and they funny want. enough, I saw I seen a, an article in the paper now now about a week and a half ago, right? About an 84 year old woman that was killed by a gobshoy robbing an electric scooter outside a hospital. He jumped on us. And he ran into the woman and knocked oh, her over, God, banged yeah. her head, and he killed her. Oh, they're lethal. So no, I hate them. I hate them. I hate those things. They're, they're just dreadful. Lethal. Yeah. So I think the motorists, like myself, I walk for a living driving, and I love getting into my car at your, like you at the weekend. I drove over to Galway two weeks ago. Beautiful. And I set off the motorway. I went the old way, you know, through the old villages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful country. Yeah. So I see Dublin. You can't drive from Sarsfield Quay, which is up at the old Collins and Sparks to O'Connell Street. I used to be able to cycle that in, what, about seven to ten minutes when I was younger. It takes me about an hour and a half in a car now with a van to do it. Well, what they want to do is get rid of cross-city traffic completely. So, in other words, you will not be able to go across any of the bridges anymore. Um, you won't be able to travel yeah. from one side of the city. So, the only way to get, say, from Malahide to Dunleary would be you have to go on the M50. You can't go through town anymore. And that's Horrific. What, yeah, yeah that's absolutely. Right. Dreadful. Well, 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 mind you, that wouldn't be a bad idea if the M50 wasn't such a shit show. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> the majority of accidents in Dublin, by the way, statistically happen on the M50. And the M50 is like a moving car park. Uh, thank you for that, Morris. Let me go to Sersha as well. Sersha, hi, how are you? 
Hello, Lauren. How are you? I'm good, sir. You've been listening to what Jackie says. You know, that like, okay, you know, it's a wonderful idea and everything else, but we have to think of the businesses in town. We have to think of people who don't want to cycle, who don't want to use their cars, older people who might, you know, prefer to drive their little car into town to do a bit of shopping. What about all of those people? Now, what we have to be thinking of here is not the coffee shop, okay? We need to be thinking about the road deaths. We need to be thinking about obesity. And we need to be thinking about well-being. And what is the solution to all of those issues? Cycling. Cycling. <laughs> Sorry, Niall. Sorry, Niall. <laughs> Niall, I'm sitting in first Cane village here, our town at the minute, and it is lashing rain. Can you imagine cycling? Uh, you, you know, down. Uh, well, I don't know what it's like. Ja- his, his, his name is his name is Jackie. Okay, yeah. Jackie. There, I I think there's something very <laughs> depressing becoming obvious here, and that is the lack of ambition and imagination with some of your callers there are people just so you know Jackie that cycle in the rain yeah wouldn't be me wouldn't be me it wouldn't be me Saoirse I wouldn't be cycling it is possible but what we are dealing with now these days in this country lazy obese people who don't know how to use their own body to get around and do you, sir, do you cycle to work and, um, you know, kind of cycle sooner than use a car yourself? I absolutely do. And I have always. This country, we used to have one car per household. Now we have one car per person. We have the, the fastest increasing obesity rate in Europe. I mean, we are slobs. We are, and, and you're on... You're on this call today talking about the impossibility of cycle lanes. And it is utterly but, 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 but hang on. But, but well, Saoirse, we need a level of equality here, okay? If you want to cycle, I'm happy for you. And I want to provide you with the infrastructure for you to be able to cycle safely into your job, right? But I also, because of equality... I want to give Jackie or other people the opportunity in their city, be it Limerick, Cork, Galway or Dublin, I want to give them the opportunity to drive too. We have to be yeah. fair to everybody. But this the is not being of, fair to everybody. The amount of cars on the road in this country is... 2.2 million. 2.2 million cars. Unsustainable. It is... Uh, our roads are not fit for us. Our habits are, are disgusting. We are lazy. People in the countryside don't even walk to the local shop anymore, they immediately get in the car. Can you imagine when the children of today are adults, will they do any exercise, any physical exercise at all? No, they'll be riddled okay. with diabetes. And it's because of people like you and Jackie that are sitting there <laughs> in your comfortable heated seats <laughs> saying, oh, stop, we need to stop yeah. this madness of cycling. Can you hear yourself? Can you hear yourself? Well, seriously, can I ask you, do you live in a city or outside the city? I don't disclose where I live. Oh, okay. But, 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 but you, you, you don't have to disclose where you live. But he only asks you, are you living in rural or urban Ireland? Which? I'm not. I'm not comfortable. Oh, you, oh God, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, it, it's like pinning a tail on a donkey. Saoirse, do you live in a city? Or do you live in... You don't live in... She lives in a city, Jackie. I know she does. She's mentioned uh, something about yeah. a city before. You okay. can speculate. Right. <laughs> speculate. Okay. So, I, seriously, can I, can I tell you, I live in a rural area. And my work takes me all around the country... Um, be, be, that's my work and that's how I earn my living and how I pay my mortgage and that I cannot do that on a bike. I cannot okay, transport Jackie, what Jackie. I need to transport. Let's, let's, so let's, it's not possible. Let's be, let's be sensible here, okay? I don't think these cycle lanes are intended for people who need to drive as part of their job. And by that I mean, I don't think we're asking ambulance drivers, okay, to get on bicycles. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I certainly hope not. Sush, but you see, the other, the other, yeah, the but, other but, but hang on, Sush. I, I'm with you. By the way, I'm, all, I'm not into the Green Party stuff, but I'm all for the environment, right? And I do want to make it comfortable for are everybody. You? Are you? Kind of, are yeah, you? kind of. I'm Kind of, okay, but okay. but I do want to make a, now. Look, I have a choice too, just like you have a choice. We, you know, with there's free will in this country. Still, the last time I checked, I want to drive my car. You might not like me driving my car, but I want to drive my car. I'm happier to drive my car than I am to cycle through town. So if I want to drive through town, which I don't do too often, I'm quite happy to do that. And if I have to wait an extra ten minutes or fifteen minutes in traffic, I'm okay with that too. Rather than get pissed on yeah. by the rain on a bike, you know, I'm all right with that. This is about changing habits and increasing the infrastructure so people can make healthier choices. Now, if we don't do this now, our, our road deaths will continue to skyrocket and there is no hope for the... Slot, well, 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 when slot. you say our road deaths will, will continue to skyrocket, you know, cyclists get killed every year as well, Sersha. A lot of cyclists. I think, we, I, think, I think we all know, I think we all know the majority of road deaths do not involve cyclists. Let's just be, let's be real here. Come on. Yeah, but the majority of people on the road are not cyclists, they're motorists. So that you, when you look at it statistically, a lot of people do die on their push bikes too, which I is not a good, have, it's not nice, by the way, can I just point I, out. I don't, I don't have no. research to hand, but I would... I would just guess that most of the deaths are caused by people driving at speed. Speed is what kills. No. We know that. Unless you're somehow going to go from a couch potato to a, an extremely fast cyclist, I don't <laughs> think we're going to see an increase. Okay, but what about, Sergio, what about businesses? You know, like the likes of Brown Thomas have come out now to say that these kind of plans destroy the footfall within the city centre, which damages their business, which they can sustain to some degree, but smaller businesses just can't. Do you remember, do you, I'm sure you do remember, when the smoking ban came in. Yes, and this was, remember the smoking. Oh, the poor businesses, how will the businesses adapt? They adapt and they move on. And this is life, okay? I'm sure Brent Thomas would be perfectly fine, right? And uh, as will all the other businesses. And... You know, that, that is not a good argument or a good reason for us to stay on this path of total, total mayhem on our roads. Stay there for a second. I want to just bring John O'D in as well, as well on this. John, hi, how are you? Oh, I'm sorry. You just, there you go. John, hi, how are you? I'm not too bad. Um, all I can say is, is it any wonder, is it any wonder the divorce rate is so high? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Sersha gets that one. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, I don't know if she's married or not. Uh, so John, Sersha makes some good points. You know, obesity is a big problem, and she's not wrong. We should be encouraging people to get more exercise. Maybe this isn't the way to do it, but... Well, uh, obesity is something that people have to decide on themselves. I mean, along with their medicine, uh, it's a lifestyle choice. Some people decide to stay in lazy all their life, more people stay active and they have problems. Also, a lot of medical conditions where people put on weight and it's not through pure laziness. You know, as the girls, the cows going through town, right? Uh, what they brought in here about three years ago, no, they brought in in Patrick Street in Cork. If you can drive through the city centre Patrick Street, the main street, from half past three until half past six, and they called it the Pan Ben because it's Patrick Street. And Cork people, they affectionately talk about Patrick Street they refer to it as Pana. So it's the Pana ban. Right. And since that was brought in, like the businesses have dropped by, the, by, by their own admission. Now, at the time when it was proposed, you know, the businesses were going to come out and, and block the traffic and buses and all. But of course, that, meant that was only all point in the sky, like they hadn't the body to do it, right? So they're still bitching and mourning and a lot of no, that business is down. And what is down is, when you can't access the main street like that, where Brown Thomas is here on Cork, where Penny is, done stores. Same, same in shopping. Dublin, yeah. If you, I mean, they, they yeah, want yeah. they want to pedestrianise Dame Street and around the College yeah. Green, which you kind see, of leaves away, it takes away access to the car parks up around Stephen's Green, yeah. so and nobody's going to go to Grafton Street. Yeah, mm-hmm. what we had three years ago, you see, what's gone over the Patrick Street during that time is what I call the drop-off and the pick-up, where the husband comes in, he drops off, we say people are tired, whatever, no, they have time. He drops off the wife, he goes to Bone Thomas, goes to Pinnies, goes to Dunn's Dots or whatever, right? And then picks them up and after. Then yeah. He, he, he picks them up. So drop off, pick up, and you multiply that by hundreds and thousands of times a day, right? That's all part of well, the well, well, the plan by Dublin City Centre transport plan or part of the transport plan is to reduce 
the amount of traffic on the road, uh, motorists obviously, by 40%. And how they will do well, that is by different plans. They will rem- remove all the parking from roadside parking all around town. They will stop people going uh, what they call cross-city travel, which means they'll close all the bridges or only have one-way traffic on the bridges, uh, which means you won't be able to cross from north side to south side or what, or either way, so you'll have to go to the M50. And then they'll put a congestion charge, like they do in London, um, yeah. that if anybody drives into the city, you'll be picked up on the camera and you'll get a 10 euro or whatever, 5 euro bill in the post. Well, it's the same in Patrick. You see, no, if you drive, I've stopped a lot of people driving down Patrick City and didn't realise that the ban was there, they might be out of town or but, whatever now. Okay. And I just saved them 80 euro. You know? Has Saoirse got any point at all in saying that, you know, we're just old fogies is essentially what you're saying. We need to move on. Times are changing and we need to start using well, public transport or cycling a bike. As, as regards bigger trucks and stuff like that, no, like, I mean... But of course I that can't happen. Going through yeah. Tone, yeah, yeah, that can't happen. But look, you need a living city and part of a living city is traffic. Actually, when they brought in the pan of Ben right here in Cork, Strangely enough, and I'm not the only one, you'd miss the sound of the traffic. It was part of the street. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, well, Sergio, think, what, well, yeah. what about that? A living city and part of a living city are people using their cars as well. They exist, did stop I, denying I, their sorry, existence. Did he, did, did he just say that part of a living city is the sound of traffic? <laughs> he what? did. Yes, yes, all over the world. Part of the living city. Part of the living city. Okay, let let, 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 let her respond, John. Let her respond. Yeah, go on. Yeah, he did say that. He did say that. Okay, that's nonsense. Nonsense is what I would say to that. (laughs) And so what I would say is the lack of ambition around our future is deplorable. We have a problem with traffic. We need to solve the problem with traffic. How will we do that if not with this plan? Sir, sir, I sir, sir, do you, do you think, do you think, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, do you think, do you think that we should be held me. up as the poster boy or poster girl for the whole of Europe, a small little island like us, that we must be the greenest of all? I'm sorry, like, but I can't go along with that. This is not green. This is about our Way of living has become disgusting. Do you not see that? We have become well, maybe the slobs maybe, well, my, my, of Europe. My. We have become the slobs of Europe. I mean, there was somebody on earlier that literally couldn't contemplate, couldn't comprehend going outside in the rain. I mean, what kind well, of people could... have we become? If you're talking, I, say, I suggest you I should go to America. Do you, do you sorry. cycle, John? John, do you cycle? Do you cycle at all, John? So, uh, no, but I walk an awful lot. I'm, I'm extremely fit, like from my age. Sir. Oh, okay. Because I walk everywhere. I, I could walk. I could walk six. I could walk six, seven miles non-stop like, if I wanted. It. Yeah, I have. I haven't actually. And to be fair, sir, I haven't cycled since I was about ten. You know. Totally, and I, my, my city is absolutely. Uh, the only way I can describe it, no, it's like Legoland. That's what it's turned into. No, it's cycle lanes. No, pedestrianised streets. The buses are nearly gone the minute. We can't get bus drivers now. They don't want to drive the buses anymore because the streets are too we narrow. Need the big... to, we need to improve the transport that we have. And this is part of that. John, when you were younger, I am sure you used your two legs and you walked around and out did everybody else in the community and you spoke to your fellow man and you had a sense of well-being. And you would be somebody, I think, that can recognize. Ireland has changed. We get into our car. We drive down to the shop. We get back in our car. We don't talk to anybody. We are disgustingly overweight. People are dying at crazy rates on our roads. And now we are complaining about a solution to all of those problems because we have become so lazy. We can't imagine changing our ways. Okay, well, well, hang on, Sir. Let me just bring in. Well, well, hang on. I want to. I want to bring in another John. Actually, I think he's going to back you up. Actually, uh, John. Hi. How are you doing? Me, no, Is that me you're asking? Yeah, it's you, it's you. You, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you kindly. Sasha is back. Oh, <laughs> I'm gone. Well, I, well, I think you're going to agree with her. Actually, but go on. Anyway. Listen, <laughs> no, um Yeah, no. I've just. Uh, I know nothing about city traffic, and I know nothing about. Uh, problems there because I have my bicycle and I use public transport and the, the 3839A bus is the unbelievable service passes my door 
five times. Well, uh, it's, well, it's not great for you that it passes your door. Most people don't have a bus passing their door, but go on anyway, John, yeah. Yeah, okay. But well, you, you agree with this? You agree with this I idea? Checked, I checked about the city with a few of my agents, shall we say, that use the city all day long. And um, uh, a few of them are actually in the taxi business, and they give me a very full report. So I give you one, a couple of points, bullet points that were sent to me. Okay, by, um, okay, if you can. Uh, one is, um, one, here we are, okay. Um, the Gardaí aren't enforcing bus lane incursions by delivery vans and private cars. That's one. Now, second one. Private motorists are constantly blocking yellow boxes at key junctions, causing mayhem. Third one is all the yellow boxes need to be repainted in the city, as you can hardly see them. Fourth one is Church Street is a virtual car park all day long since Capel Street was closed to pedest- uh, to. Yeah, because people will be taking the alternative and going up Church Street, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gardy, he said, can't even get in or out of the prize. But whose fault is that? Isn't that that's Dublin City Council? Because they because they they closed off Cable Street, they increased Correct. the traffic to Church Street. So what, what? So why is that the motorist's fault? The law of unintended consequences. Yeah. Like America- Sorsha and our gang are the ones who wanted Cable Street closed. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, Sorsha wants more- pedestrianised streets. You're not really agreeing with Sorsha, so are you? Really, are you? Emergency vehicles like ambulances and fire engines are having huge difficulty getting past gridlocked streets. The Gardaí have taken to using the Lewis tracks as their private road. <laughs> so it's so bad. OK, but, here, but, yeah, but here's the thing. I'm not disagreeing with you, John. And I'm not disagreeing with Saoirse in that respect that, yes, it is a disaster. But who created that disaster? Saoirse and her gang. But you, you, no, yeah. excuse uh, me. Yes, Saoirse, we are, You are an example of somebody who is stopping okay. progress at every turn. We need to reimagine how we are living to solve all of the problems that we are all experiencing. But John has just given you all the problems. And, and all, all of the problems that John has just outlined, with the exception of the yellow boxes, people need to pay respect to the yellow boxes, are a dire- direct consequence of you and your gang, Saoirse, and the stuff you wanted done. Saoirse's man would never sit in a public bus if she had to die for it. She, uh, and uh, that's half the cause of it. Excuse There's people- me. Excuse me. What? What does that mean? And where does that come from? That, well, the, uh, my contacts in town ask me one question, and there should be a survey. Why do people, some people, spend two hours sitting in a car in a traffic jam going from A to B a couple of miles around the city. I'll tell you why. Day. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because they have been sold an idea that this is modern living. You get in your car and you drive and this is part of you, a modern person. It's more person. comfortable, this is lo- It's lonely. It's selfish. It's not lonely. It's, 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 when has the last time you talked to a stranger in public transport? Well, now? I, I, mean, we, I don't particularly... I, I don't particularly use public transport. I don't we'll use, use it. Oh, you don't. Oh, I'm no. shocked. Shocked. Um, shocked. No, 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 no. Because I don't have any reason to use it. I have a car. Yes, because you can't imagine a different life than the one you're currently living. We are a miserable people. We have I, I live a very busy well, life, Sir. I, I don't have the time to be standing at a bus stop waiting for a bus. Lonely. We are selfish. We, we have forgotten. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm not finished. Why are you constantly, constantly interrupting me? We are fast. We are fast. There's two people talking at the same time and I can't actually hear. Yeah, I yeah. Well, I won't stop because okay. I, was start, I had started first. So we are fast becoming a community of individual, individuals who have forgotten, forgotten how to work together for a common good. So you can sit in your okay. BMW, Nile yeah. and you can it is a BMW. You, don't want, you won't get into a public transport and you can wonder why we have the social problems we have or we can start to reimagine a better future for all, which is what this is trying to do. Okay, John, just finally, I, I need to know, I know you've given me outline me loads of problems there, John. 
do you agree or disagree with reducing the traffic by the methods they have suggested, which is removing the parking, stopping cross city traffic, and charging a congestion charge and other such things? Do you agree with that? That's 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 I said that's a done deal. That should be, but the fact is, I why because just because you have a bus stop outside your gaff, that's great, isn't it? Gardaí are now not even enforcing the I, blockage. I, yeah, forget, yeah, forget about all the, the Gardaí. The, the blockages wouldn't be there if it wasn't for people like yourself and Saoirse who are encouraging all this. But the point is, yeah. it's all well and good for you, John, to turn around and say people shouldn't be driving their cars if they could get public transport. You've got a bus stop outside your house. Well, I'm dealing with professional drivers, and they tell me if all delivery vans were made to deliver their goods before 8 o'clock in the morning, the city would be a completely different place. Okay, well then let me go to a delivery driver here. Hang on. Jason, hi. <laughs> yeah, you should be delivering before 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's no problem. I work nights. I leave my wife for your kids in the middle of the night down to go and deliver his goods from because yeah. everything he has in him, everything he has, everything that him and Sarah have around him starts and lights in one of these trucks. Now, Niall, I suggested this a long time ago and I seen this, Jesus, going back 15, 20 years ago when I started on that M50. Most of the crash on that M50 are caused by people who are in their cars for less than an hour in the mornings and an hour in the evenings coming to and from work. They're either eating their breakfast in the car, doing their makeup on their phone, they're on the laptop, or they're eating. Yeah, you know, that, 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 that that is it. I'm in a truck, though. I see it every day. Oh, I know. I spend me life. I see the, I see the girl. M50. I see the girl driving a car on the M50. This is not a word of a lie. She had a hair dryer plugged into the cigarette lighter, and she yeah. was blow drying her yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were doing a hundred kilometers in the outside lane while watching our phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, we need an outer orbital around Dublin. We need it to come in at Balbriggan, link up. The M1 with the M2, the M3, the M4, and the M7. The amount of trucks and cars and vans to just come into the city to use that M50 just to go off at one of their motorways. That M50 should be just an inner road for the city, for, yeah. for the people of Dublin. And the, this business of only one toll on it. I mean, the amount of people that are dodging the toll. We, we, we should do what they do in America. What they, okay, what they do in America in these situations, in all cities in America, is they have an M50 which is like what they call yep. an interstate, right? So they have the M50, which is the ring road, and then they have what they call a turnpike. And a turnpike yeah, basically road, means, right, yeah, know. one road with no exits, say from Balbriggan, uh, or off the M1, right over to, you know, as you mentioned, the M7 or the M5 or whatever it happens to be. So one road, no exits until you get to the end of it. So that takes but all the trucks, was... all the traffic. That you can, because yeah, if you're no, driving from Dundalk, no, if you're going from Dundalk to Bray or to Wicklow or to Arklow, you have to go on the M50. Stupid. Yeah, that's okay. That's not. But that's okay if you're going from the dock. But we should be able to. It should have been completed all the way around. It's all in the way. half a motorway. Yeah. But you need a motorway that trucks can use because the amount of lads that come in from say the north, okay, and they're going to Cork, okay, or they're going to Galway, they have to hit the M50 there at the yeah. airport. Disaster. That traffic. So they, there should be a link road right okay. around that. But, but get, get getting off. getting back to the other get idea, I, I I completely agree with you, and that's only part of the problem, yeah. right? Getting back to yeah. the other idea that they want to reduce the traffic, and Sersha agrees with it because we've become slobs to, by 40% in the city by removing, you know, parking spaces, removing car parks and, you know, charging congestion charges and stopping cross-city traffic. Do you agree with that? Niall, Dublin is built in a valley. You're constantly climbing out of the city centre. From the time you're on O'Connell Street, OK, every road goes up. OK, we don't live in a flat seat, OK? There's a lot of climb and a lot of hills. We don't have the weather. We don't have the infrastructure. You take 40% of the cars off the road, where's the money going to come from? Because the amount of money that, that that comes in and taxes alone, just on cars, VRT, XV, VAT, and on, on petrol diesel insurance, where's all that money going to come from? To then, I mean, you go outside the city, Niall, and the roads are in a bad way. Right, they really are. There's trees along every road. There should be no tree within five well, ten feet of a road. Okay, well, 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 a motorway. okay well, let, let Saoirse respond to that. Saoirse, that's an interesting question, one I hadn't thought yeah, about. I'll, I'll, Okay, okay but right. if you deal with that question, just that question. If you remove 40% of the traffic, or we all remove 40% of the cars from the country, for example, you know, that's a huge amount of revenue lost to the government between car tax, diesel, insurances, everything. The huge amount of money lost. Okay, the only thing he says is I agree with is that the weather, we can't change the weather. We can change everything else. Where will the money come from? We find the money when we need to, Niall. I think you would agree with that. We find the money to send to Ukraine. We find the money to to give to these to these you know big big companies that come in. We don't take the Apple tax. We we say no, no, this one's on us. You know, <laughs> forget about the money. This is bullshit. Okay, 
The real problem here is that we have lost the ability to imagine a better future for ourselves. And why we are continuously talking about the weather as if that's some kind of reason. Well, I mean, back in the day before the, the cars, people were outside. Has everybody lost their minds? Why have we become so soft? See, Jason, Jason well, I, I don't know, Jason, you have a car as well, do you? No, no. Wait. So, so how do you how do you get from your house to the pavilion? Let's say if you're going shopping or whatever it is, you're going, wherever you go shopping. I don't know, right, but we live. I live down the country. I don't. We, I live down the country. Okay, so, so live, how do you get to your local yeah. shops? Walk. Well, we walk. It's in the village. Well, there, we, there we you go. Everything Sir, in our he village. walks. Right now, if I need a car, no, Niall, I've told you before. I use go car. So when I I figure it out, I only needed a car fifteen times last year. Like that's all I, I physically needed. One. So you just rented so out. Go, yeah. I, yeah, I I I I use that go kart app. That is brilliant. There's a van there in the. In the oh well, well, that's that handy. You live near well, and you live yeah, okay. You live in rural Ireland, so you live near a village. Yeah, so yeah. W- w- we're okay. There is there is a bus service to Dublin, but it's here, Miss Nile. Okay, you know, but, but but okay. So do you, but then do you essentially agree with Sersha then? No, no, no. I don't it because I don't need a car. Lorraine doesn't drive. I drive a truck six days, five, six days a week. I um, personally don't need a car. It was just sitting in the well, yard. Well, then, well, then you're agreeing with her. She's saying you don't need a car. You can cycle or walk. Well, I don't cycle or walk. I live. Listen to what I'm saying to you. I live in a village. I live in my truck five days a bloody week, Nile. When I get out of this on a Saturday morning or a Friday night, I don't want to see another car. I'm okay can in I my job. Think, Lorraine, Lorraine doesn't this? drive, and we live in the country. We we're okay in a sense. We have the stuff around us. Like we moved out of Dublin City, you know that way a long time ago, Nile. So okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, sir. She, you want to respond to him? There, go. The habits, the habits that man is describing. Most people in this country are too late lazy to implement but well, he is implementing them because he's sick of being in his truck but it should show you that it is possible to not have a car when he is in his truck someone else is in the office can you not see well, let me, well, well hang on let me go to Angela Angela can you not see can you not see what Saoirse is saying here Angela it's very obvious and plainly obvious and well done to her let's all get off get out of those cars get onto our bicycles and lose a bit of weight Okay, so Saoirse doesn't want to divulge for some strange reason where she lives, even though everyone else will. So um, let's pretend that Saoirse lives in Clare, okay? And they start, she's she's saying that everyone should cycle everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. So Saoirse lives in Clare and her job is in Limerick. (laughs) The nearest bus stop is 45 minutes away. And it takes an hour to get in to work on the bus. So that's two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. So there's four, let's say four right. hours. That's if the bus turns okay. up. Okay. But don't you so, understand? Seriously, I'm not finished. Seriously, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. And so then she's uh, living in Clare and her local shop, because she's living in rural Clare, is 10 miles away. And she has driven. I, 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 the yeah, Angela, stop. but I, I think everyone's missing yeah. the point. I, 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 I don't even think Saoirse would disagree with the fact if your nearest bus stop is 40 minutes away that you're going to have to use some me, sort of our transport. Don't speak, excuse me, don't speak for me. Thank you. Oh, oh, don't geez. speak for her, Niles. Don't speak for her. So, can I just say, can I just say before we go down any further this ridiculous rabbit hole, the current, the, the oh, current, God. The current public transport needs to improve, and that is part of this vision. So what you're describing there is not sufficient, but it will improve. That's the point of this. When? They've been saying that for years that it's going to improve. I, I think it will improve once, Ex- once we you, can... Will you once can we can think can... all you want, Saoirse? No, excuse it's me. Not the, point is, the point is there are people in power trying to crack open the majority of your heads to imagine this type of future and all they are being met with is resistance. So when that I'm happens, the, okay. yes, so of so course the somebody... public transport will improve. Of course it will. What do you think will happen? Nobody will take two hours to get to work and two hours back. That makes, that's a lot of stuff. Of course Seriously. that's not good enough. So yeah, no, so what she what she's kind of trying to say, here. Angela, is the laws of supply and demand. In other words, if more people went and use public transport, they would be forced to provide more public transport. 
Well, we have had councillors and CDs for ye- CDs, TDs for years down here trying to get the bus and the, the transport right. And it's not. It never has. It's not Your right because meant to, it's no, people like I'm not you finished, Sirsa, and I'm people not like Niall. Sirsa, don't interrupt me, please. Sirsa, don't interrupt me. I'm not finished. Um, and the thing is that when your bus is meant to arrive at 10 past one and it doesn't arrive until five to two, that's a problem. Okay. Or if your bus is meant to arrive at 10 past one, or you can huff all you want, doesn't arrive at 10 past one or 20 past one or even quarter past two. These are in rural areas. So Okay, well, leaving aside rural areas, because I don't want to conflate and confuse the issue. In, well, hang on, Angela, I, and I understand the point you're making, and I agree with you, by the way. But in, sorry, yeah. she doesn't. In relation to city yeah. centres, I mean, this is what this main argument today that's been in the news is about city centres. They're saying, according to Dublin City Council, with their stupid survey, which is really faulted, flawed, to be honest with you, because the only people that yeah. put in submissions <laughs> were those are probably from cycling clubs. Um, 81% of respondents, they said, b- believe that we should re- reduce the amount of road space for private vehicles <laughs> in the city centre. Do you agree with that? No, I don't, because if you look at the amount of storms, the amount of, like last weekend, if people had to cycle into work, how could they? Because they're told to be very careful. Uh, um, You know, we had a storm come in. How are people meant to do it then? Saoirse says, I don't want to speak for Saoirse because she doesn't know. I imagine a lot of those people would be told to work from home or don't travel, do not make unnecessary journeys. It's the same as now. So the whole of Dublin closes down because there's a storm and people can't cycle into work. I mean, what? So we don't change the the way we're in cars because of two days every year when we have a storm? That's ridiculous. Not cars. Two days. There's only two storms a year, is it? Have you, you tried are to out in that I'm sorry, but can I just inform everybody? We do not live in some kind of extreme North Pole. Okay, <laughs> we have some rain. Okay, and we have a couple what? of storms. We need to just get a grip a here on the storms. weather in this country. It's get a raincoat. Okay, see? Angela, get a raincoat. And you not get a raincoat. And get over it. Here, listen, love. Listen, love. I go out every day with my dogs. I walk beaches. I walk lakes. I walk everywhere. Okay. So you're not preaching to me. All right, love? Okay, well, well, good for you. you. Congratulations. No, there are many people who cannot put their toes Sirsa, in this Sirsa, country. Sirsa, I'm not finished. Do not interrupt as you have requested all the other callers, right? So I go out walking with my dogs every day. I go out in the rain. I go out in everything. But there's a difference in me socially going out, walking, and having to get to work. Okay. So there's storms more than once or twice a year in Ireland. Am I correct? There will you be, can answer yeah, that. Yeah, there's probably more. There's probably uh, there's at least 20 or 30. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for so the love of 20. God. For the love of God. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> Just, it's, it's awful, isn't it? Isn't it awful? I have here? a, sorry, I have a vision <laughs> I have a vision in my head of Saoirse <laughs> on her bike. She'd be like the Wicked yeah. Wicked Witch of the West. On her high that, that is deeply unkind. <laughs> I, I would I'm like to say that. <laughs> I, 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 I need a basket on the front of it. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I sorry, Saoirse. I am done with this call now. What I would like to say <laughs> is, it is people like the two I of you, you were that done. stop progress. Oh, yes, well, this is my final words, if that's okay, Angela. It's the people like that's you right. that Continue. stop progress. If it was up to people like you, we would never have brought in the change with the plastic bag. We would never have brought in the smoking ban. This, you stand in the way Definitely of progress in, in this country. Bag, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. See ya. She's gone. <laughs> She's gone, yeah. She's gone. That damn smoking ban, that killed me like. <laughs> of course I wouldn't have brought it in. I, there's, some, there's a part of me thinks she's mad, but there's a part of me thinks she's fu- she's funny as well. She's hilarious. <laughs> and, and, uh, the thing but here's right, the thing, I'm she's serious, Angela. She is serious. She is very serious. But my whole thing as well is, when she's saying that we don't social, socialise, can you imagine having to sit next to her on a bus? Oh. <laughs> 
couldn't deal with her for more than 10 minutes. Let me just hang on. Let me go to Stephen as well. Stephen, <laughs> hi. How are you? Hi, uh, um, Niall. Uh, just um, counting up the number of um, storms already. 13. 13, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably since the start of the year. I don't know. There's probably about 20 or 30 in the year, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, it depends on what you call a storm, by the way. You know, bad weather. I mean, to be honest with you, the storms over the weekend, now don't get me wrong, I know there was places like Salt Hill were pretty badly hit and stuff like that. But generally speaking, across the country, it was slightly exaggerated. It was like it was like the end of the world, the way they were talking about it. And it was a bit of a windy yeah. day, and that was about it. And you know what oh, the well, thing uh, is, I'm sorry now, just to say, the, the, yeah, the thing is, we actually have worse weather when they don't call it a storm. Yeah. It's, they've kind of, it's yeah, they've kind of calamitized everything nowadays when they're talking about the weather. I think that's all part of the narrative, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, sorry, Stephen, dealing yeah. back to the original question, do you think in the cities, you know, Dublin, Limerick, Cower, Galway, Cork, should we be reducing the amount of private car traffic? <laughs> well, if we could, we should, but they should actually have proper road systems. I, I just don't, I don't know how they're going to do it. Because if you reduce the car traffic, how are they going to get all the people in to work? And saying they're going to take a bus is not going to work because people, um, you know, they leave their children in before mm. they go to work. Oh, I know what you mean. You know, yeah, yeah, all yeah. These, you yeah. know, can you imagine in the centre of Dublin and are you going to let, um, like, you know, it's just not feasible at the minute. Because see, see some, pe- some people, I mean, and there, there are people that have public transport available to them but don't use it. That's fair enough. But there are a lot yeah. of people, for example, who can't use public transport. And I'll give you a quick example. Yeah. If you live in Malahide and work in Blanchardstown, right, uh, in Dublin, it really isn't feasible to use public transport because you have to go into town and then get another bus from town back out to Blanchardstown. That's yeah. and the, first thing in the morning, at eight o'clock in the morning. That's going to take you two hours. So that's and whereas you could drive it in, you know, forty minutes. So that's just not feasible for a lot of people. Well, I, I, you know, I I used to work in in Cork City, and um, to be honest, it was quicker actually to drive than take the bus. As yeah. soon as they brought the bus lane in, it actually killed it killed the taxis because they they were using them. And, I mean, everything just slowed down. The, the bus yeah, lane I mean, you're right. If we, if we got rid of all the bus lanes and the cycle lanes, traffic would be moving nice and freely. <laughs> and, and like I, I actually, you know, I was down in uh, a town uh, yesterday, and I saw seven. But sorry, I'm a bit asthmatic today. It's okay. um, Seven, but seven buses, and in total, because I was sitting down there, and I'd nothing, literally had nothing to do. I was resting after doing a bit of a walk, and there was only forty-three bloody people came off those seven huge buses. So the people aren't using them. No, there's a lot of the, a lot of the routes, by the way, are just not being used. They're not sustainable. But the argument is, is that if they did things like this and reduce traffic on the roads or reduce the space on the roads for private cars, that people would be forced to use it. And then the argument is that the more people that use it, the more they can provide. That at the moment it isn't it isn't sustainable to provide empty buses. Well, I I, I do actually think they have to put it in place. I've been to Germany, Spain, all over Europe. Yeah, but- and. It was dirt cheap. It was there. It most was of, well, most of them have underground rail systems and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't. You know, but it was running every 10 minutes. Um, you don't see the Lewis really running every well, well, 10 well, the minutes. Lewis, I mean, the, every don't get me wrong. The Lewis is great, but it's, it's it's of no value to you unless you live near one of the Lewis stops or, yeah. you're, or you're going in the direction the Lewis happens to be going. So it's of no value to you otherwise. <laughs> it's only value to people who use it and use it for a particular type of journey. Uh, hang on, I've loads to get through. Sorry, I, I just need to get through them, Stephen. I'm sorry for rushing everybody. I do apologise. And just stay with me for a second. Steve, hi, how are you? Okay. So... By the way, can I right. can I say something first before you say a yes. word, Steve? I, I, I suppose okay. I, I better be nice to you and I better be honest with everybody here, okay? Okay. Uh, for those who don't know, our website uh, went down because of a very serious technical problem we had uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, last weekend, mm-hmm. actually, not this weekend. The weekend gone. And we mentioned it on social media that it would take us a little bit of time to get it back up. It was worse than we thought. We literally had to get the whole thing rebuilt again. 
and we got contacted by a listener to the show. Angela? Me. And Steve. I have to be nice to him now, don't I? Steve, oh, Steve no. contacted the show um, because he has a lot of technical knowledge. And we, had, we knew yeah. this before because he had mentioned it. And he worked tirelessly for the whole weekend with us um, to get the website well back up again. Oh, Can well, you hear I'm, me? I'm actually being yeah. very sincere. Well done, Steve. And, and didn't you. and didn't charge us anything for it either. So, Steve, thank you very much, Steve. We we do appreciate yeah, it. Uh, by the way, that doesn't mean I'm not going to argue with you anymore. I'm just saying. Well, you know what? You just made it ten times more difficult for me to say what I was going to say. You're going to roll it down on a piece of paper here. Go on, fire away. No, just pretend we don't know each other, Steve. It's fine. Just pretend we don't know each other. I won't hold it against you. What I was going to say was, stop being such a patronizing prick. (laughs) 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 Go on. Go on. Go on. I'll accept that. Go on. So, look, here's the thing with Sorsha. You know that there's... What she says is fundamentally correct. Regardless, it's, it's not wrapped up in any charm. People are irritated by her because the sound of her voice. But you know as well as I do that the, the utopia that she's looking towards is the right direction to go. We know this. That is the right way to go. We may not be able to get there now. I, I'll give you an example. You guys hate the Green Party very much so, yeah? Yeah, I'm assuming you do too. <clears throat> no. Oh, Okay. No. Look, I hate the delivery method. I don't hate their ideas. I'll give you an example of something. You would all say that a no-smoking campaign is a good thing, yes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, who ran the first no-smoking campaign? Angela, be honest, Angela. Okay, go on, yeah. Yeah. So, who, well, well, no, well, actually, was it not Fianna Fáil that first rang? Ra- Fianna Fáil were the ones no. who introduced the smoking ban in Ireland. Hold, hold on a second. No, 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 no. Who, in the history, not of just Ireland, ran the forced no smoking campaign? Yeah, but, but what's that got to do with this? Hitler. Oh, Jesus. Right, Hitler okay. ran the first yeah, one. So my point him. is, yeah, my point is, basically what my point <laughs> Where is... Where are we going with this? Even, are you saying that even, the Green Party are like the Nazis? No, <laughs> no. what I'm saying is that even arseholes have good ideas. Right, okay. You know, their delivery method... I, I, no, don't get me wrong. wrong. Some of the stuff that they come up with, but the problem with the Green Party is the carrot and stick approach, right? Which is not what they do. They use the stick and yeah. carrot approach, which is punish people who don't go along with them. That's my problem yeah, exactly. with the Green Party. Well, and but their ideas, you know, they're some of them. Utopia, some looks, no, some looks of them are strange. okay. Some of them are mental. Some of their ideas are mad. Okay. Well, I was in the city centre a couple of weeks ago, and I was driving up the keys, and there was a woman with her buggy. She was walking past me. She had a load of shopping. She you was know, strapped onto the pram, and she was walking up the keys. It took me just over an hour to get up to the top of the keys. Now, she was long there. Forty minutes. She got to her destination before me. So my point is, what's the point? What is the point in sitting in traffic? It would be much more quicker for all of us to hop on a bus because they have bus lanes, free up the spaces for ambulances and for delivery drivers, which should have scheduled times. But, yeah? Steve, that, that, that's okay, right? Okay, I'm, I, I used to live in Dublin, um, so I, I can talk about this. Um, it, it's okay when it's, it's easy enough. Right, that you want to get the 46A or you want to get this and it goes from there to there. But it's not when you have to go from there to there, get the dart, get the the Lewis, Mm -hmm. get the bus, get the... It's it's not. It's not as easy. It's not easy for somebody living on the south side that works on the north side or somebody on the north side that works on the south side. And and I would argue, Steve, the reason it took you an hour to get from, say, Phoenix Park uh, to to O'Connell Street, for example, on the Keys is mm-hmm. because there's now only one lane. There used to be three. They now have... They, they, they put a cycle lane, a cycle lane and a bus lane. Okay. Now, there was always a bus lane on the inside anyway, but they now have a bus lane, which is kind of... It's the most confusing thing in the world. The bus lane is now in the middle, or there's something like that, or parts of it. Or the, you can drive in the middle, but you can't drive on this side or part of it. It's all very confusing and terrifies me driving down it. Anyway... They have created okay. that problem. The same way somebody mentioned Church Street. Church Street is like a car park now. And why is it like a car park? Because people can't use Cable Street anymore because they've closed into the traffic. They've okay, pedestrianized. Well, just talk, just let, let's remind everybody of something. So John said something earlier. He said that traffic is a part of the, the background noise of cities. Yeah, only since cars were invented and manufactured. Before that, there was no cars. Before that, it was horsebacks. Yeah, it was horses and carts. 
yeah, yeah. and yeah. Trans. Sorry, my Google, my Google Home is talking to me here. Sorry, yeah. Um, but yeah. So th- my point is, uh, let I'm going to put this to you, Noel. Let's say you're in charge of the country. You have free reign to do what you want. Yeah. What would you do with the city? Um, I but the problem we have with Dublin City is right, and it would take a long time to fix. Dublin City is not like most cities. Um, Dublin City came about rather than by design. In other words, it just happened. Mm-hmm. It got bigger yep. slowly, right? Whereas if you look at places, say, like Manhattan, they were planned, they were designed. Look at, you know, Berlin, look at Fra- or Paris. They're much more organized, much more designed cities, mm-hmm. right? And as Jason rightly mentioned earlier on, it's in a valley, so you've got hills up in every direction. You've got curvy little streets, streets that are too narrow to put cycle lanes in, but yet we've put cycle lanes in them, which reduce the traffic to barely enough space for one car to get down. That was bad design. There are places where we should have cycle lanes and we can put cycle lanes, but we can't put cycle lanes everywhere because what it's doing is slowing down traffic. Yes, I see the utopia you and Sir are talking about to some degree. It would be a nice idea. But unfortunately, we live in Ireland. The weather isn't that great. And a lot of people don't want to cycle. If more of us use public transport, yes, they'll probably provide more public transport. Mm -hmm. But we need to look at public transport for other people who don't have a bus stop outside their house. Or for people who want to get from one part of the city to another that's not serviced by public transport. So basically what you're saying, Noel, so basically what you're saying is, if, let's say we decided to invest billions into the infrastructure. Yeah, and we had a subway and underground or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's say we had underground and we had more trams and more buses, everything was electric, everything was fantastic. Yeah. Would you have a problem with the city no. being pedestrianised then? No, not at all. I probably so wouldn't. Your problem, so, you, so your problem is with the infrastructure not being there, not with the actual yeah, but we should, being Yeah, but we should have thought of this years ago. It's too late now. We can't, bu- we can't no, build an underground. No. Well, how long would it take to build an underground? There was a Chinese company volunteered t- about 25 years ago. They told the Irish government, we will build an overhead rail system, which was a monorail system, around Dublin to all the major points. And we will pay for it, provided we can keep the profits for 10 or 20 years or whatever it was. And they refused them. I thought it was a great idea. But they refused them. The same way as we had planned to build a metro underground, you know, I think it's the Radisson Hotel or whatever it is in Ballyfermot or the Hilton in Ballyfermot. I don't think it's called that anymore. They actually built a train station under the hotel because there was a plan mm-hmm. to build an underground rail system or metro to Ballymun at the time. So that was part of the plan. When you build a hotel, you had to have a rail system under the hotel. It's still there. The station is still there. Obviously, there's never been a track put down. So what I'm saying is, so you're, and how, again, your problem is with infrastructure. Talking, but Stephen, how long are they talking about having a train out to Dublin Airport even? Mm. Oh, even absolutely. did. Yeah, I mean, look, we know that they're blustering and they're blowing it out of their arse and they haven't a clue what they're talking about. But that's when people like Saoirse come on and have her opinion, she's looking towards the future. And she is, look, there's nothing that she had said in that which is uh, not factual. The woman was absolutely correct. She just happens to be annoying when she says it. So let's look at no, what people a, like no, or are not. actually saying how we can achieve it. Well, hang on, both of you. I, I want to bring Sean in. He's waiting ages. Sorry, Sean, I do apologise. Sean, hi, how are you? Hey, Niall. Good, Sean. They want to reduce the traffic, the private cars in Dublin, by 40%. So I've been, I've been doing a little bit of maths on this while I've been waiting for you to bring me on. Okay. So Ireland has 0.1% of the total world CO2 emissions. Yeah. Of that, 32% is from cars. We have 2.2 million cars. So that gives us, if, if you've got your fingers ready there, 0.00000000026. That's the impact percentage-wise of me driving. Mm. Now, to punish me for that driving, which has absolutely no effect whatsoever on worldwide CO2 emissions, I've had a tax increase, 50% fuel increase, a duty increase, Parking rates are up, the insurance is up, the cost of EV charging is up by over 200% in the last two years, and every single toll has gone up in the country. We get to the stage of critical mass where these things are grossly disproportionate. And I agree with you. I agree with everything you've said, by the way. We so should, many people yeah. who will drive. Well, look, we should not be encouraging, you know, the use of electric cars or removing cars to the road because we're going to save the planet and save the climate because that's absolute bollocks, right? Okay, we all agree on that. Well, I do anyway. Some people might not. But the, the point that we have to consider is, you know, congestion. Because congestion is, leave aside your CO2 emissions and everything else. 
You know, what's the point in sitting in your car for an hour when you can get a bus that will take you 10 minutes? That is not the point, Steve Spagan. Well, the biggest issue I have with this one, you take our family, for example, we have to drop the young one off to crash after eight because they don't open till eight o'clock and then be into the city centre before nine. Bus won't work for us. But the simple fact of the matter is we hit a critical volume here at this stage. There are only so many people you're going to get out of cars onto bikes and onto buses. And once you hit that number, you're not going to push it any further. And we're investing so much money now to get an extra 1% or 2% out of the cars into bicycles. And you've heard the last callers, forget about your storms 12 times a year. I'm sitting here at the moment in Drogheda in the absolute piss in the rain, and there's not a hope I'd be cycling or getting the bus in it, because you know what? The workplaces don't have showers. They don't have a place to change. And I don't want to be that bloody miserable. Yeah, there's, I need to do I, by the way, can I just point out? Say, yeah. We have, we well, have you know, car drivers <laughs> that need them. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Steve. I was, I was watching, I was watching something the other day, um, a show on YouTube. It's called Yes Theory, and it's a bunch of lads who go all around the world and you know visit mental places. Well, not mental places, but places you know that are not the average. And one of the places was this. It was minus thirty six all year round, and the ground was iced up. And it would be pissing down snow one one minute, and then your eyebrows would be frozen off you the next. Driving in a bit of rain, or sorry, cycling in a bit of rain, is not that difficult in comparison to what other people around the world have to do. We are absolutely yeah, why, way too well, comfortable. Yeah, well, you're, you're grand in saying that, but why do it? I'm like Sean. I would rather sit in the comfort of my car yeah, at, 20, so at 23 degrees and listen to the radio rather than mean cycling in the pistons of rain. So you so here's the thing: you would rather be comfortable and lazy than to see a city progress. You would rather stand in the way of progression. I'm not lazy, so you can sit on your I just point out I work very hard. Just so you can sit on your arse in a car and be comfortable and go, oh, look at me in a car? No, Noel, that's not fair. It's not fair on the rest of the city. I mean, there's people who live in the city centre who have to put up with that crap there 24-7. You only have to look at the hospital, the children's hospital that's going to be built. There's no way an ambulance is going to be able to get in and out of there. But then, yes, well, yeah, but that's a whole other argument that they built their hospital in the wrong place anyway. That's... <laughs> A whole other argument. Absolutely. Uh, but there's nothing we can do about it now. It's built. It's, uh, it's up there. So my point is, if we reduce traffic massively, I would say more than before. Is it 40% there? there 40% they want to reduce it. Yeah, sorry, Sean. They want to reduce traffic by 40%. And the way they'll do that is a congestion charge into the city. I don't know. Maybe a tenner like in England. Uh, like the ULED charge in the UK. Uh, they re- they remove all the parking spaces from the city. You know, around kind of Stevens Green and everything else. All those parking spaces. Most were nearly gone anyway. Uh, maybe close a couple of the car parks and they also will ban cross city traffic and then they're going to tell us not to use the M50 and if you do there'll be an additional toll they'll tell us you can't use the car parks in the city centre because of the weight of the cars the new EVs and where do you draw the line and say we are suffering enough with cost of living everywhere we turn whether it be the car the shopping the ESV bills no matter what we do there's another penny taken from my pocket for another NGO or for another that word progress Stephen just used. How is this progress? Show me where the progress is in a society by getting rid of traffic out of the city, by getting rid of cars out okay. of the city. What about the okay, let me, let, 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 me, let me ask you this, Sean. Let me ask you this. Sean, so, let me ask you this. If, uh, what I said to Noel just there earlier on, let's say we did get rid of all the traffic out of the city, except for deliver- deliveries and um, emergency services. The we pedestrianised the whole thing. The right, now, hold, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. And we invested into public transport heavily, where you, it was like, say, the Tokyo, you know, where things are on time all the time. You have buses, trams, um, underground tubes. If you had all of these things, would you not say that the city would be a better place then? If I could give in now the city reliably in public transport that yep. was fast, efficient and cheap, I'd do it. But yes. you know what? Do I think this government so will then do what's that your problem? 30, 40, 50 years? So the problem is they're forcing people out of the cars now without that world-class system you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the trains run better in your favourite country, Ukraine, right now than they do in Dublin. So Absolutely. Me, I, I like that. I like that. Your, your favourite country. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for that. A little bit patronising. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my point remains the same is none of you have an issue with the but, overall... But you're goal. saying that to everybody. You said it to me and I kind of agreed with you too, Steve. 
you can't turn around and say, if you have this utopian public transport system, would you use it? Of course, most people probably would. A lot of people, some might not, but most people probably would. But we're not going to get that utopian system because we've been talking about this for years. That's and we're, si- we're still in the same situation. How long are they planning on building a metro? How long? The word metro has been mentioned for the last 20 years and we still haven't laid a single track. Niall, we have money-hungry, grabbing bastards in government. That's all we have there. We need people who are going to represent the people and to put plans like this forward and get them done fast because we know. I heard you only not too long ago say things like, this is one of the richest countries in the world. You're absolutely right. This is per head one of the richest population. Per head of population, yeah. And, and we could do huge amounts of progress if we only stop those arseholes in power and put real people in power, not these robots, not these people who just want to line their own pockets. We can have the infrastructure there. Nay saying it constantly, saying, no, no, sure, we'll never have it, we'll never have it, we'll never have it. That's bollocks. We will have it someday, as long as people get off their arse and actually fight for it. No, I don't know. And I'll start yeah. using it someday. Yeah, but when they eventually have it, We'll move from our cars. Until then, stop. Yeah, so somebody did text in, and by the way, it said Sean is wrong in relation to the CO2 emissions. No, look, Sean gave you an approximate. I don't know the exact figures. It doesn't matter anyway. If we took every single car off the road in Ireland and closed down every single business that used fossil fuels in Ireland, it would be like walking onto a beach, removing a grain of sand and expecting the tide not to come in. A load of shite. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me, <laughs> I think we'd all agree on that. Uh, let me just go to uh, Nula. Nula, hi. How yeah, you know I lived in Copenhagen way back, and it's similar to Dublin. But uh, uh, you know the, the interesting thing is, I just googled how many cars is in Denmark, and it's four point five million. Four point five million. Yeah. Now, what was the population? Uh, we well, yeah, but what's the population in Denmark? About five million, but similar to ourselves. But in Copenhagen itself, there's thirty nine percent of people cycle to work. Now it's flat, and the cycle lanes are wide enough so that people can pass each other. And they're on the wider streets. You know, like, say, um, you could easily take half of the pack off both sides of O'Connell Street to have a decent cycle lane. I don't know what the heck they're at with the have The the cycle, the the paths in in O'Connell Street are about the size of the room I'm living in. (laughs) What the hell is that about? But they do that in France too. Like if you walk down the Champs Elysees, they have these wonderful wide footpaths with, you know, people sitting out drinking their coffees. Mind you, you wouldn't sit out and drink your coffee on O'Connell Street. You'd be robbed. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit to be robbed up yet, you did. <laughs> anyway, so like, I mean, I used to live in Dublin and I used to cycle from Kilmacud right into, you know, go to Georgia Street, which is wide enough for a good cycle lane on both sides as well. Mm. And Dame Street is wide enough for a decent cycle lane on both sides without having to interfere with the traffic at all. You know, like, if Copenhagen, which is built on kind of lucky canals as well as being a big port as well, and having, uh, you know, mm. if they, and, and at the same time, you see, then you have Jutland, which is part of Denmark, which is a farming area. And I was thinking, well, that must be where uh, the people have cars because they live down side roads and by roads. I know a woman, I worked in a medical device company, you know, and there was people coming from Swinford and from Foxford and from Ballinrobe because they couldn't afford to live in Galway. So they had to move out to Hedford, miles, 20 or 30 miles away to come into medical device companies in Valley. But they're not going to cycle down the road and drop off a uh, mm. bridgey like, you know, who's going to school and Mary then that's going to something else and, and the baby has to be put off in the crash. They cannot do that. You're you're going to stop if you if you go to that extreme, a lot of women in this country would not be able to work. You'll be they'll be back into the kitchen. Yeah, no, I know, I understand, and that's the point that Sean was making earlier on that he has to drop his it kids out of school sense. first, yeah, or to the crash or whatever, yeah. And, and I think people have to, we, we, we're completely different to most, like in most mainland Europe, people live in apartment blocks, mostly. We live and, in houses, and, yeah. And we live in one south houses. Like if you were living down the side road in Clare Galway, and you have to walk out to the Tomb Road at six o'clock in the morning to, to, get, a, to get the bus, 
you know, that's about 20 minutes and then you have to get the bus and then you have to go into your clean room and gown up and all the rest and then kind of maybe pick up kids in the evening. You can't do that on the bus. No, no, no. I know. I understand how inconvenient public transport can be for a lot of people. And by the way, there's, a, there's a, an element here. Sean made up a good point in relation to choice. You know, you might want to just sit in your car, even though it might take an extra fifteen minutes because you're going to be stuck in traffic. But we have created the traffic problem, as you rightly said, Nula, by putting cycle lanes in stupid places. There's a cycle lane that runs from Dunleary right into town, um, and it, I know in one part of it, for example, in Monkstown, there, I've never, I very rarely ever see anybody on it. And and I, I what I saw there and the cycle lane is. Are you familiar with the one Sean around Monkstown? There, it's it, they have these kind of steps. Yeah, so you, but you, should they again with that one in Monkstown? They put one in on the N11, and now they're putting one in the Rock Road and each of the feeder roads then on Nutley Lane on Newtown Park Avenue, Fox Rock Avenue. They've a lane on each one does, and I don't know if you've been around there recently, but traffic from. 8 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the evening is like rush hour traffic because of all the bike lane work. Um, well, and Nuala rightly pointed out, even around Mungstown, there would have been enough room on the footpath to shorten, the, you know, narrow the footpath slightly and put a cycle lane in. They didn't have to take up the road to do it, but they did, and they put this step on both sides of, there's a cycle lane on each side, and they have a step where they, the traffic runs down through the middle, right? One single lane of traffic. It's a disaster. And then what I see is cyclists, not in the cycle lane, but on the road. You know what I mean? It, it, it well, just kind of doesn't kind of make I any think sense. I there's an opportunity there. They could have had those bike lanes running through an awful lot of the estates like Springfield and Holly Park where you keep the bikes off the main roads. They're walking through nicer estates where there's less chance of them getting hit by cars or anyone else. It's safer, it's cleaner, and it doesn't affect traffic. Same with the one down Dean's Grange along the graveyard. They could have put the cycle park up through the graveyard and out on Newtown Park Avenue. It would have been cheaper, safer, and better for everyone. You've got the houses there along along Dean's Grange Road for the... the disabled people, the, the older people, the cottages who've all lost their parking spots outside their own houses. I, it just beggars belief. And then they install these barriers that within six months are in tatters and are causing trip hazards. You know, it, it, they're an eyesore on everything and everyone's sick and tired of it. Everyone just thinks it's gone too far, too soon, without, like Steve says, this Tokian u- utopia that doesn't exist in Ireland at the moment. It's cart before horse. Green Party trying to punish us as much as they possibly can. Well, you know, we, we all know the answers to that in the local European and uh, general election. Just don't vote for them anymore. But which, which, which you know what's the problem, too, is the guys from the NTA and the TFI, they're all guys who have flexi time, who can work from home, and who have free parking wherever they, 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 they work. So, because I've been at meetings, and yeah. they're guys making decisions. I said to them, why don't you go to Copenhagen and see what they do there? Let's get a get a junket and go over there for a few days and just say you're not going to you're only going to use public transport for the, the day for the for the few days that go. Then they'd learn something instead of going down to the bar and having a few drinks. The funny thing is, I actually rang um, uh, today. I rang Dublin City Council and the executive manager of traffic, who made a comment online in relation to this. Brendan O'Brien is his name. Who's the man? You know who thinks this is a wonderful idea. And when I rang the city council, the head office, which I'm assuming is the one in, uh, on the keys there, the big, huge, you know, that horrible looking building. Anyway, uh, when I rang, the person at reception had no idea who he was and had no contact for him, no contact number, couldn't put me through to him and didn't even know where he was. So she said, you'll have to send a letter to their media or something like that. So there you go. Didn't even know who he was. Anyway, listen, thank you very much indeed, Nula and Sean. I appreciate you coming on the air to talk to us. By the way, uh, I have loads and loads of WhatsApp messages here. And you can send them in any time if you want to. Let's just play one or two of these if we can. Well, what about if you're going in to do, we say, your Christmas shopping or Santa shopping or whatever, and you have bags and bags. You're not going to fit that on your knee on a bus. People need the comfort of their car for those kinds of things. Now, I'm a nervous passenger. I've been trying to drive for years, can't do it. I prefer using public transport, but I'm just one bus away from town. It suits me perfectly fine, or one train. So that suits me, but that doesn't suit everybody. But like if I have to go into town and do a heavy shop, I break it up over two weeks so I can get half this week and half the following week because I know I won't be able to carry all the bags. Plus when you're walking to your bus and you're waiting for public transport, sometimes buses don't show. But oh, Eamon Ryan needs an absolute head check up, seriously. Hi Niall, thank you for your show. I am an avid listener to your show and I do believe the government are systematically destroying our once beautiful Dublin city and city centre and purposeful 
by their gov Green Party policies and their immigration tents and they're allowing people to sleep and shit on our streets and beg in every corner. Then when it's beyond the place anyone safely visits to shop or sightsee, properly, property prices will collapse and income the vulture and income and income the vulture fund the vulture investors from overseas as in 2007 to 2011 and back in the 1980s etc plan destruction for future investors all for the big boys ah noel sorcia she's absolutely living in loopy land you have to be there to experience what the problem is so i think we should just source her up <laughs> cheers pal I actually believe in Sasha, she's 100% right. Since I got my car and gone to Arabalazi, she said right about that. People living in the towns walk down and walk down. So she's right. Niall, until we get proper transport in the city, which I can't really see happening in the next 50 years, people will never, never, ever leave their cars. They will always stay in their cars. And until then, Mr. Raymond Ryan, in my mind, um, he will always have the emissions in the town because he's created all these long traffic lights short green long red So now his, his emissions are going up. So his brain is backwards and in my mind I just think he's doing an absolutely disgusting and disgraceful job. I'm a taxi driver I could go on go on go on but I can't come on I'm too busy. Cheers pal Thanks very much indeed, Neil. Thank you to Sarah. Thank you to Jane. Thank you to Elizabeth. Thank you to everybody who sent in your voice notes there. By the way, some of the messages that are coming in is Saoirse Eamon Ryan's daughter, says Keith on WhatsApp. I don't think so. Sorry, I was trying to impersonate her. Hey there, love the show. You're all talking about getting cars out of the great city. But what about people that can't use public transport due to disabilities? Never thought of that, by the way. That was a, something to mention. It's grand using public transport if you can hop on and off a bus, but some disabled people need to use their cars due to their disability because public transport isn't easy to use, says Rob. Yeah, you've got a good point there, Rob. Uh, we tend to forget, uh, sadly, about people and when we in, put infrastructure in, people with disabilities. Uh, Kevin says, by the way, no. Keith says, is it's Eamon Ryan and the Green Party's fault regarding the traffic in the city. Uh, there's a meeting tonight regarding blocking off the keys. Uh, the Green Party are lunatics. Oh, I'm going to disagree with that. Eddie says, I cycle a lot. I uh, have to, uh, to date. To, uh, I, have, I cycle a lot. Have to. Uh, up-to-date e-bike lights, indicators and everything around it, stop at lights and so on. I've used it uh, on trains as coaches. Uh, this is where the nightmare begins. They are only built to take a few, not so many, and pack trains not enough time to exit with them. In other words, they're not leaving enough space for people to bring their bikes on, you know, so you can kind of cycle and run, or what's it called that, I don't know, stop and go or whatever they call it. Um, I'm looking here as well. Uh, Deirdre says an X, honestly, who really believes this? When they produce these reports, they should be forced to prove where, when, and how the amount of answers and over what period of time. There is nothing that rings true about this or much of the polls they produce, just like the referendum polls. I couldn't agree with you more, by the way. Michael McNamara, by the way, on X and other, uh, quoted a tweet from RT and said, more misleading reporting from RT because RT reported this story to suit the government narrative. It's endless. Uh, 3,600 3, submissions were received by Dublin City Council, of whom 56% of those who travel by car agreed with the proposal. So, in fact, a tiny minority of the 0 0.5 million car owners in Dublin agreed. Yeah, only a tiny minority. The, the, the survey they did is complete and utter nonsense because the majority of those people didn't drive that were actually in the survey. And then the rest of those public submissions, remember, they're public submissions, they're most likely lobby groups, so they're probably groups of cyclists. And only a while ago, when we were talking about the hate speech laws, and it was put to Leo Varadkar that the majority of public submissions disagreed with the hate speech laws, wasn't he the very one who said, Asha, we don't listen to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, they're just kind of lobby groups. <laughs> but yet we're listening to them now all of a sudden. And remember, the reason that we're sitting on the keys for half an hour is because of the Green Party in the first place. Because of all those cycle lanes everywhere and bus lanes everywhere and widening them and providing extra bus lanes and cycle lanes where probably they aren't really that necessary. So that's the reason why there is very there is so much traffic in the city. Pedestrianising streets that didn't need to be pedestrianised, making one-way systems that didn't need to be one-way. They've destroyed the city because of this kind of 
urge to get more cyclists on the street. And realistically, it hasn't worked. They've got some extra people on the street cycling, but the majority are not going to cycle because of the weather in this country. If you're going into a busy office during the week for meetings or into work, you know, there might not, as somebody mentioned, be shower facilities. So you get pissed on in the rain on the way into work. And no matter how good your rain gear is, you know, you're still probably going to get wet or get destroyed. And it's cold, apart from anything else. I wouldn't be doing it, that's for sure. But then again, thankfully, I don't have to drive into the middle of the city. Uh, the word as I have to go is to where the radio station is in Three Arena. Well, listen, thank you to everybody who got involved in the show. And please, please, please try and support us. We try to provide this open platform um, where you can have an uncensored opinion every single day. Uh, tomorrow, for example, we will be talking about the government and who you're going to vote for in the, in the local MEP elections for Europe and also the general elections. So we'll be giving you that opportunity tomorrow to come on and have your opinion on any of the politicians you like and tell us who you're going to vote for. But that comes at a cost. The cost is that we have to pay the bills. We don't particularly want to make money. There are three of us that work hard on the show, not including Steve, who gives a help out every now and again. Now it seems it's becoming more of a part of it. But there are three of us who work on the show for free. We don't get paid. But we did struggle to pay the bills last month and we had to put our hand in our own pockets to pay those bills. We have hosting costs, electricity costs. We have a lot of costs. Licensing costs for all the software that we use that kind of puts all this on the screen and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, it's all really expensive. So please help us if you can. And the only way to do that is to subscribe to the podcast by going to nileboylan.com. There it is. There on the screen. nileboylan.com. You'll see it there. Please go there and subscribe. It's only five ninety nine plus tax a month. And of course, that gets you get to see all of the previous interviews we've done, all of the previous shows, some of the stuff that we haven't streamed, some of the stuff that you haven't seen before. It's exclusive just on the video section, but you can get to see them all there. And you can do that by subscribing on the website. Or indeed, if you want to just do a one-off donation, please do that. Uh, just go to our website and click on the Donate button. If you click on, go into the menu, go to Donate, and you can donate a fiver or 500 or 5,000 or 5 million if you have it, if you really want to support us. So please do that. Go to nileboylan.com. Thank you to everybody who supports us. Um, it's been really interesting so far. And we look forward to talking to you again tomorrow at 12. Until then, have a great day. The multi-award winning Niall Boylan podcast. Listen live on Facebook, YouTube, and all the usual live stream services. To get in touch, just WhatsApp or text 85 100 The Niall Boylan podcast. They told me to shut up. Available for download from all your usual platforms.